Billy asks, what is the determining factor of using norm inverse versus norm dist? I thought it was percentages, but in the homework we're using norm dist with percentages. Thanks, Billy. So this is a good question. Uh, I wanted to make a quick little comments on these things. So to answer this question, I want to sort of go back to the basics and see why would we use norm dist at all? And then why are we using it with percentages all of a sudden? And then a little bit about what norm inverse is. Uh, and then sort of that's that's where we're at. So here's the most simplest problem that we're used to dealing with uh, with the norm inverse, or sorry, norm dist function is this, what is the probability of five or less in this normal distribution um, uh, with a mean of 10 and standard deviation of two. So we can um, draw a normal curve, right? It looks something like this. And this says that we should expect a mean of 10, standard deviation of 2, so there's like a standard deviation over here that's 8, another one over here that's 12, something like that, right? And this is asking what the probability of 5 or less. So we just come over here and find 5, and this is what we want, right? And we know how to do this, so we just use this norm dist function equals norm dist. And I'm going to run out of space here real fast, can't write very small. And what do we do? We put 5, comma, uh, what we got, what we expect was 10, comma, standard deviation is 2, uh, comma, 1, right? So this gives us the probability, right, the probability of 5 or less. So norm dist, probability, right? So that's the most simple problem. Uh, we're working on problems, right? This has something like this. If I take a sample of size 30, what's the probability that my mean will be less than 5 if the underlying distribution is n? Uh, normally distributed with a mean of 10 and standard deviation of 2. So underlying distribution, whoops, underlying distribution, what does that mean? Well, that means, um, uh, you know, the, what this, the, the thing that I'm sampling from is distributed like this, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean that the mean will be distributed like this, although we understand that the mean will be distributed pretty similar to this. In fact, we say that the mean uh, the sample means will be distributed well, with a normal distribution uh, with a mean of 10, right, the same the same mean, but the, the variance is a little bit, the standard deviation is a little bit different. Uh, instead we say that it's 2 over the square root of 30, right, this is the standard error, which is sigma divided by the square root of n, right. So here's 30, that's, uh, that's n, and here's 2 sigma. So this is what we're looking at. So if we were to draw this picture like this, we would say, um, you know, here's 10 still. And now our uh, standard deviation is, is no longer 2. It's just this 2 divided by the square root of 30, uh, which is a little bit different. Uh, but that's okay. We're still looking for what if my sample mean is less than 5. So we still kind of find 5 over here. And we're still doing the same picture, right? So it's not a whole lot different. Um, the only thing that's different is the standard deviation is a little different, right? So here's equals norm dist. Again, I'm going to run out of room. But what I got is 5. What I expected was 10. The standard deviation now is this guy, right? 2 divided by the square root of 30, comma 1. So this is, again, finding the probability, right? This, and remember, we talked about the probability as the area under the curve. So the area, this entire curve, if we were to take the area under everything under here, it would equal 1, right? That's why we can, if we're taking the right side, we take 1 minus. The area under here is equal. We just make it equal 1. It's fine. No problem. So the norm dist function just gives us the probability of the, the area under 1. All right. So if I take 30 trials of binomial experiment, that has a probability of success of 50%, what is the chance that my trials will be successful less than 45% of the time? So remember, what is a binomial experiment? A binomial experiment means there's only one of two things that can happen, right? Uh, either a success or a failure. So in this case, we say that the underlying sort of probability of a success is 50%. So now I'm going to try this 50 to 30 times. So this is the same as flipping a coin 30 times, and I know that the probability of it landing head side up is 50%. 50%. So then I want to know, if I were to do this 30 times, what's the probability that, uh, that I would get uh, a head side up 45% of the time? This is a question. That's all it's asking, right? So we found out in class the other day that if I have sort of big enough trials, enough trials, 
and it was sort of greater than 30. Whoops. Sorry, greater. Oh, it doesn't let me draw there. It's greater than 30. There, I'll underline it. Greater than 30. And if I uh, uh, if n times p is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 5, then I can actually assume that this is normally distributed. When I say this, what I mean is 50%. Uh, 50% is normally distributed. Sorry, I don't know. No, this won't work. That this percentage, see, not 50%, it's this 45%, that p hat, p hat, is normally distributed. And what? How? how is it normally distributed? Well, it's normally distributed with a mean of 0.50, right? Mean equal to p, this guy. And what's the standard deviation? Do you remember what it was? It was something goofy like this. It was like the square root of p times uh, 1 minus p over n. So this is actually the same thing that we saw on the page before, right? So instead, though, our mean is 0 0.50, right? So we can have a, a normal distribution with the mean as a percentage, or a mean is in this case is actually a, a percentage, but it's also a proportion, right? And we're just trying to find the chance that I could have less than 45, whoops, less than 45, something like this, this area right here, right? And I know the standard deviation, the standard error, actually, it looks like this, this part right here. Uh, so this is, we just to take the same approach that we did before, right? So it equals norm dist, norm dist. This time, though, I'm going to actually use percentages in here. So I'm not trying to find the probability of a certain number of trials, right? So I could actually do this. We did this with the binom dist function, right? Like the question would be a little bit different. It would say something like, what's the probability of, uh, you know, of 30, if I had 30 trials, what's the probability that, uh, you know, 12 of them or less would be uh, head side up, right? Or, or that I'd be successful 12 or less, right? So that I would use the binom dist, especially if I had a sample size less than 30. But in this case, I'm actually dealing with the percentages, the, the proportions, right? And I can actually figure out what the probability is less than a certain proportion, right? So this is what I got, 45, comma, what did I expect to get? What was my mean? 50%, right? Right there. And the standard deviation is this guy. Oh, gosh. This guy, right there. I'm just I'm not going to rewrite it, but that's what it is. Comma, 1. Okay. So again, we're taking the probability. I cannot underline it, but probability is what we're taking on this one. Our, uh, like we just did in the uh, the previous example with probabilities, or essentially with binomial experiments in which there are proportions. But that's if we're asking for probabilities in return, right? Here's a new question. If we have an N uh, a distribution with normally distributed with a mean of 10 and standard deviation of 2, what's the point for which 20% of the observations are lower? All right, let's draw a picture. So here's 10, All right, again, we have standard deviation, standard deviation, standard deviation, something like this. And we want to know the point for which 20% of the observations are lower. So what is that saying? That's saying that, well, if I start from over here somewhere, negative infinity, and come to some point here uh, to which, you know, this area right here is... That area equals 0.20, no, 20%, right? 20%. And remember, this whole curve, everything underneath this curve, everything under there equals 1, right? So I want to find this chunk that equals 20%. And what I want returned, actually, is the point um, for which that will happen. And by point, I mean this point right here. Right? This is a scale along the bottom here, right? Just so happens that here's 10. And we know that you know, if these standard deviations, like here's 12, here's 14, here's 16, and over here is 8, here's 6, here's 4. This is a scale, and it can be whatever we're measuring, right? It doesn't matter. We want to find the point right here on the scale. So this is why it says, what's the point? Oh, I can't underline it. If I could, it would say, what's the point for which 20% of observations are lower? as opposed to what's the probability of less than 20%, right? So this is a norm inverse function question. Norm inverse function. And what do I do with norm inverse? Well, I just try to find the probability I want. It's 0.20 and the median standard deviation. So 10, 2.
right? This will return the point. All right, so this is what we what the difference why we would use a norm inverse. We can use the norm dist. We uh, then we if we just try and find a point, then we use this norm inverse function. So finally, norm inverse will not give you a probability. It gives you a point or a measure on a scale for which some percentage of probability is below. Norm inverse gives you a probability of lower than some point or measure. And we can use these results of a binomial experiment as these results. So that means that we can find the probability that a proportion is smaller than some percentage. Right? So that means we can use this norm dist function to find a probability of a probability essentially if that underlying probability is a binomial experiment like either one of two things can happen so how do I tell what's what well first I have to say is this question asking for a probability in which case I know that I, I should think about this as a distribution norm dist or binom dist if it's asking for a point then I'm going to use norm inverse right if it, even if it if, if in the problem there is some probability in there and then uh, you know, which sort of standard error should I use? Well, if it's asking for, uh, if it looks pretty apparent that I have like an X bar, a mean, and a standard deviation, well, then I use that first standard deviation, sigma over the square root of n. If, though, I can figure out that this is a binomial experiment, only one of two things could possibly happen, then I know I'm dealing with proportions. i got to do the p hat stuff. And then my standard error is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. All right, so hopefully that helps. Thanks a lot. Bye.